Hey guys, it's Saturday. I pray that you've had a great week. And just be reminded, it's one day away from Easter. Who are you inviting to church for Easter? I know it's going to look different this year, but it's still church online. And what an opportunity we have. We've sent you videos to invite your friends, but there's nothing like picking up the phone and calling them, texting them. Come on, engaging with them. Make sure you're sharing the post. And on Sunday, we've got three experiences, 9, 11, and 5 p.m. So you can watch those and be a part of those. And we're going to be live chatting chat and during each one of those. Come on, we just want to do everything we can to reach out to people. So who are you inviting to church for Easter? So what have we been covering the last couple of days? We've been looking at what we've called a countdown to Easter. And here's our statement that we're going to be preaching from on Easter Sunday. The resurrection of Jesus gives us the power to close the gap between the life that we're living and we could live or should live. There's a power to close the gap, to live in the fullness of life that God has for us. And today the passage of scripture I want to read comes from Luke chapter 22. And this is where Peter denies Christ three times. And for the sake of time, we're going to jump in to the end of this. We're going to begin in verse 60 through 62. And it says this, but Peter said, this is the third time that he's been approached. Man, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Here's the one that when Jesus said that days before, he said, hey, if everyone else forsakes you and leaves you, I will never leave you. But here he is. He's now betrayed Jesus three times. Can you imagine the grief? Can you imagine the darkness that Peter finds himself in? The pain, the disappointment, the frustration. How am I ever going to live with this? And that's what he expected. He expected that he would have to carry that weight and that grief for the rest of his life. But during the early morning of the third day, Come on, Jesus' tomb <laughs> was found empty and the stone was rolled away. As Peter and the other disciples are huddling in fear, not really knowing what to do, trying to process it all, Jesus suddenly appears to them fully alive. The Bible tells us that actually Peter and some of the disciples had gone back fishing. Peter said, I'm going back. And it's amazing how quickly, if we don't watch, we can resort back to the old ways of our life. And what do we find in the story, amazingly enough, that as they go back fishing, they had lost their touch. They, they hadn't caught anything. It's amazing. We're not going to find what we're looking for in our old life. It's only searching ahead and pushing ahead and seeking God for our new life. But Jesus from the shore shouts out to them. They don't know it's Jesus. He said, hey, let down your nets on the other side. There's a miracle. Peter recognizes and realizes it's Jesus. He jumps in the water, he wades or swims ashore and he finds Jesus. And I love this on the sea shore. We see an incredible circumstance and situation happen. You know, instead of letting Peter live with the shame of his past and the mistakes that he made, Jesus, come on, gives him or pulls him aside and asks him a question. And here's the question he asks. And it's a question that propels Peter into his purpose. John 21 verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon son of Jonah, do you love me? Do you love me? Actually, if you read that passage there in John 21, you'll discover three times Jesus asks him that same question. Why? Peter's getting angry. I told you once, I told you twice, I told you three times, of course. But there was a reason for that. Why? Because Jesus was just reaffirming the relationship that Peter had denied three times. Three times he denies Christ. Three times Jesus asks him the question, do you love me? Come on, Peter's power over death and darkness, or rather Jesus's power over death and darkness meant that Peter didn't have to stay 
defined by his past mistakes. He could embrace the call on his life and he could become the leader that Jesus always knew he could be. Today, just like Peter, you have the opportunity, I have the opportunity to say yes to a loving Jesus and to be loved in return by him. No matter how messy your life looks, how how far you feel you've wandered away from Jesus, there's nothing that can separate us from his love. Your past mistakes and your current problems do not dictate your purpose when your life is fully rooted in Christ alone. You see, his resurrection, because of the resurrection, it assures us that no situation, no mistake is impossible for God to redeem us from. There is no fear that God cannot conquer, no life that he cannot heal, no darkness that can stand against his power, the power of a risen Savior who conquered death on your behalf. There is nothing our God cannot do. All we have to do is trust him, believe him, and ask him into our lives. It's just a simple prayer that goes something like this. God, would you come into my life? I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. Let me pray for you today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you today. Just like with Peter, so many times we deny you and let you down. But God, I'm so thankful that God, for every time that we fail you, there's more opportunities, God, that we can live for you. And God, that we can be successful in life. And God, I thank you for every denial, God, there's an act of love. And God, I pray that we would not only love you, but realize, God, that there's a love that we can have through you, the love that you give to us. And I pray that everyone that's watching this today, God, no matter the darkness of their life, the sin, the failures, that they would realize there's nothing that you cannot conquer and have conquered for them. And God, that you love them today. And all they have to do is ask you for that love. And again, God, we pray your hedge of protection to be all around us. Keep all sickness and disease from us. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you prayed that prayer today, we would love to hear from you. We're here to help you. Tune in again tomorrow, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 5 o'clock for three Easter experiences. It's going to be a fantastic week. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. Come on, today begins a new day for your life. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.